Metamorphosis is the key word for 2024. In Romans 8, we are told that the whole creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God, and the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. So for 2024, using metamorphosis, it means transformation, it means change, change is hard, change causes anxiety. And I wanted to look at what happens to the butterfly when it's in the cocoon scientifically and the struggle to be released. Because I truly believe that's where we are at. And as sons of God, we are being manifested. The transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly involves the caterpillar digesting itself within a cocoon or chrysalis. Enzymes dissolve its tissues, leaving a protein-rich soup. Imaginal disks, organized groups of cells formed during the caterpillar's early development survive the process. These disks fuel rapid cell division to shape adult features such as wings, antenna, and eyes. Despite the seemingly chaotic process, certain caterpillar muscles and parts of the nervous system are preserved in the adult butterfly. Observing this metamorphosis is challenging. But images of a Tusa silk moth reveal the delicate, translucent pupil stage that typically remains hidden. The struggle of a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis is essential for strengthening its wings. The chemical release during this process and the fluid pumped into the wings contribute to their development. Interfering with this natural struggle can result in weak wings and hinder overall butterfly development due to the crucial timing of the emergence. Their slow release helps them build the necessary muscles to do all things butterfly related. Plus the timing of their emergence from the chrysalis is key. Too early and they're doomed because they won't have developed enough. So if a well-meaning human interferes and tries to help the butterfly with its struggle, it likely will doom the butterfly to weak wings and lack of development. I want to read Romans 8, beginning with verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the heart knoweth what's the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he also called, and who he called, he justified, and who he justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. 
Who's he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that it's risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So beginning with 2024, every day we are to ask, what can I do for you, Lord? What is on your heart? What is on your mind? Before we go anywhere, ask, is it okay if I go? We are in treacherous times. We're in lawless times. I've never read the Bible before where what is happening in the world is matching up with what I'm reading, what the last days would look like. We are in these times for a reason. There's a struggle. It's a good thing. We are to trust him. We're to keep our faith and hope. Romans 8 talks about hope. We're to keep that hope. We are to do it through prayer and praise and being in the word of God. And we need to encourage each other and keep our eyes on him. We will not be able to do it without him. And so in him, we live and move and have our being. May it be so in 2024. And I'm excited to see the manifestation of the sons of God. I'm excited for the metamorphosis. And we're going to close with prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you and we praise you for this insight. May your will be done. May we not interfere with your work and give us wisdom in this area. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you and we praise you.